Hello, today's lesson is 1.5 equations and I wanted uh, to share with you um, a little bit. Um, what you see on the board right now is just a couple of uh, expressions and an equation. I just wanted to show you the difference between um, what we call an expression or what this particular textbook is referring to as an open sentence versus an actual equation. So an open sentence or an expression is basically um, the same thing almost, except that this guy doesn't have an equal sign in it, which is why they call it open. It's, it's open to uh, interpretation. We don't know what it actually equals. Um, but in this case, in the equation, the, the equation, once you add the equal sign, equate, then you have an equation. So I um, just wanted to kind of be um, clear that so far we've been dealing with a lot of expressions in the previous sections. And today we're going to delve into actual equations. So we're going to be solving them. So before we do that, there's a little bit of vocab that this particular textbook uses that I want you to be familiar with. And so the first thing that you'll see is replacement set. A replacement set is a set of numbers from which replacements for a variable may be chosen. And again, we will um, see how this plays out in an example in a second. Um, and then you might be wondering, okay, you know what a replacement set is, a set of numbers. Well, what is a set? A set can be any collection of objects or numbers, and it's often shown using braces. So we have these little um, brackets that we have here, and you'll be putting some of your answers in brackets that look just like that. So I want to show you know what a set is. Um, and then we have element, and each object or number that is in the set is considered an element. And then we have a solution set, and that again is a type of set. It's the set of elements from the replacement set that make an open sentence true. Now again, that might sound kind of wordy, but I wanted to show you how that's going to play out with an example. And here we have an example. It says find the solution set of the equation, and they've given me um, the equation right here. If the replacement set is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So you see the little brackets that are going on here, and this is the replacement set. So what we're doing is we're going to take the elements, so these are all the elements, 2 is an element, 3 is an element, 4 is an element, 5 is an element, 6 is an element. Those are all elements of this particular set. And this is our replacement set. So what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to take the variable that's from this expression, this equation here, and we are going to replace the variable Q with each of these um, replacements or elements um, one at a time. So we're going to start um, doing that. So um, I will go to times Q plus 5 equals 13. And we're trying to see if this is, in fact, the case. Um, and then we're going to use a 2 in here because that's the first element that I'm checking here. 2 times 2 happens to be 4. 4 plus 5 is not 13. 4 plus 5 is actually 9. So 9 does not equal 13. So then the number 2 would not be in the solution set. So maybe over here we're going to write our solution set with little brackets, and we're going to put inside of it the ones that actually make the statement true. So then I try another number. This time we can try 3, and 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 plus 5, again, is not 13. 6 plus 5 is 11. So then that means that 3 is not in our solution set. And then we try. 5, oh, I'm sorry, 4, so we put the 4 in there, and 2 times 4 is 8, and 8 plus 5 is in fact 13. And since that's actually a true statement, it means that the number 4 is part of our solution set. But we still have a couple more numbers to try, so we're going to try the 5 now. Two times that is 10, 10 plus 5 is 15, and that's not 13. And then the last number that we're going to try is going to be the 6. And 2 times 6 is 12, and 12 plus 5 is 17, which is not 13. So it turns out that none of these numbers work except for the 4. So our solution set is very small. It only has one element, and our solution set is the actual number 4. 
So that is how um, you do these whole replacement set things. So I will give you an example for you to do. Uh, it's got two parts. Find the solution set for each equation if the replacement set is. So in this case, you're going to use the same four numbers for both um, equations and then come up with the solution set for each one. All right. So in our second example, it's actually a multiple choice question. So if you're wondering um, why it says A, B, C, D, um, that doesn't mean that you're going to replace P with those numbers. It's actually trying to choose which of those letters is the correct answer. Um, and this problem is going to be stretching or applying um, our order of operations. So if we recall from PEMDAS, parentheses do come first. And here we have some parentheses. And within those parentheses, we have exponents, which is the next letter, exponents. So we want to do 6 plus 25 minus 5 divided by 2 equals P. And then um, that's the exponent part. And then we still have these parentheses to simplify. So 25 minus 5 would be 20. So we get 6 plus 20 divided by 2 equals P. And the next letter that we have is M for multiplication. There's no multiplication, but there is division. And we have to do that first. So 20 divided by 2 is 10. So now we have 6 plus 10. And then lastly, we have 16. So P equals 16, which means that our answer for this equation, A, B, C, or D, the correct answer is D. Awesome. So now you get to try one. And again, using your order of operations, determine what the value of T is, and then decide if it's F, G, H, or J. And this is 14.2. Um, just so that you're clear, and this is 27, 6, and 3. I know sometimes my handwriting can get um, difficult for some people, so I want to make sure that you know how to do that. All right, then we move on to our next example. And now they want me to solve the equation this time. This is not an um, expression, this is an equation, and we're going to be solving it um, using all of the PEMDAS and inverse stuff that we've been learning. So. Again, PEMDAS tells us to do parentheses first. So I'm going to start in here. And then the um, E for exponents 4 squared is 16. And then 16 minus 10 is 6. So I have 7 minus 6 plus n equals 10. And there is no multiplication or division, but there is addition and subtraction. We want to go from left to right. So 7 minus 6 is 1. And at that point, we can't really simplify it any further as far as order operations goes. So now we have to go to our um, inverses. And we want to subtract 1 from both sides. And then that cancels, and we get that n equals 9. So for part A, um, example 3, we are going to get um, that n equals 9. Sorry. I was distracted there for a second. OK, so now we're going to do something over here. We're going to see that we've got um, PEMDAS on this side and on this side. So 3 plus 2 is 5. So that's going to be n times 5, or just 5n is another way of writing that plus 6 equals, and on this side, you're going to get 10 minus 3, which is um, 7. So we're going to get 5n plus 7. Um, and then when you do that, you're going to um, try to get the n's on the same side. And what's going to happen is that these n's are going to cancel with these n's. And then you're going to get 6 equals 7. Well, 6 never equals 7. That's not true. So this is a situation where you have no solution. All right, so in the first example, um, n equals 9. And in the second example, we're going to get no solution. Now, I want to take a moment here and just kind of um, talk about this for a little bit. Um, this example A is what we would consider a conditional equation. 
it means that the two sides of the equal sign are only equal if the value of n is 9. That is the condition that has to be met. So a lot of times we call this a conditional equation. Um, this guy over here is also conditional. We're looking for the condition that will make it work. But what we've just realized is that there is no condition that will make this work. Um, so basically what happened is that the variable canceled on both sides. Um, that's a strange thing to happen. When the variable canceled on both sides, you're going to get one of two um, situations. Either it's going to be no solution or it's going to be everything is a solution. Um, so in the case of when, it, when the variable completely cancels on both sides, um, either the statement you're left with is completely true or completely false. In our case, it was completely false and so there's no solution. In our next example, we're going to deal with one that is completely true. Um, but before that, you have uh, two examples to try on your own. And then we will do this guy. And again, I want to just be clear, identity. Um, we talked about conditional a little while ago, a conditional equation. An identity equation is when the two sides are true um, all the time. An equation that is true for every value of the variable, it doesn't matter what you put in the variable, it's always going to be true, which is the opposite of what happened in our example part B, where it was a, a false statement and it's never true. Um, so let's just see what that means or how that plays out, and we'll do that here with this example. Okay, so we start with PEMDAS, um, and first of all, this is 2 times 5. So we have parentheses first, it doesn't really matter which ones we try here, but this is 10 minus 8, which is 2, and then you have the 3h plus 6 from here, and 2 times 3 is 6h, um, so we're going to go 2 times 3h plus 2 times 6, and then you're going to get 6h plus 12 on the um, left. Over here, we're going to get 2h plus h is the same thing as 3h. So right here, we've got 2h plus 1h is 3h plus 6. And then that's being multiplied by 2, so you're going to get 2 times 3h plus 2 times 6, which is pretty much the same thing that you had there. So 2 times 3h is 6h plus 2 times 6, which is 12. And let's just suppose that at this point you haven't noticed what's already obvious, which is that they're the exact same thing on both sides. So you're continuing to work and you're thinking, okay, well, I've got to get the H's on the same side. So you subtract the six H's, just like we did in the previous example. Well, when you do that, just like before, the H variable cancels, cancels on the left, leaving you with 12, but it also cancels on the right. So it cancels on both sides. It's the same thing that happened in the last example. Um, but this time, the difference is that what, we're, what remains after the H's cancel, after the variable cancels, what remains is 12 equals 12. Well, is there ever a time when 12 doesn't equal 12? This is always true. Okay, and because 12 is always equal to 12, then this is called infinitely, infinitely many solutions. It means that everything is a solution. It doesn't matter what number you put in the place of h that you replace h with, you will always have the exact same answer because the two sides of the equation are the exact same thing. They are an identity. So in the case of the example three, we ended up with a statement that was not true. Again, the same thing happened, the variable canceled, but the, the, the resulting statement that six was equal to seven was false. It was never true. So when it's never true, you have no solution. When it's always true, you have infinitely many solutions. So I just wanted to um, clarify that uh, for you when you are looking at how to solve these little guys, or when you encounter one. So we have one more example for you. It is a word problem. I know you guys don't like those. Oh, sorry, this is your do-it-yourself question, sorry. So you want to do that first, and then we do have one more example. It says, Mr. Hernandez pays $10 each month for movies delivered by mail. Maybe he has Netflix. I don't know. I have Netflix. Um, he can also rent movies in the store for $150 per title. Write and solve an equation to find the total amount Mr. Hernandez spends this month if he rents three movies from the store. So some of you could probably figure out what the answer is for this equation. 
but the problem is that um, it also it, it does say that we have to write. Um, so even though you might be able to do this in your head, perhaps um, it does say write and solve an equation. So not only am I solving the problem, I need to write an equation. Um, and this goes to the fact that sometimes and you can do something in your head, but if you can't articulate what you're doing, that's uh, a problem. So we're, in this class, we're going to try to help you get to the point where you can articulate what it is that you're doing in your head. Okay? So there's basically two things going on here. Each month, Mr. Hernandez has to pay $10 automatically. So if we say that C is the cost that he's paying, and let's just use M for month, okay? We'll use M for, um, the, not for months, for movies, because that's the variable. We know that every month he's going to have to pay $10. That's not a variable. Every month it's always $10. The thing that is changing is the amount of movies that he rents. That's going to affect his monthly cost. Because if he rents three movies, it'll cost a certain amount. But if he rents five movies, it'll cost a different amount. So we come up with an equation that his cost is going to equal $10 automatically. He's always going to have to pay $10. In addition to the $10, he has to pay $1.50 per movie. So if it's one movie, it's going to be $1.50 times one. If he buys or rents two movies, it's going to be $1.50 times two. If he gets 10 movies, it's going to be 150 times 10. So this part indicates the rental of the movie part. Um, and this is the flat rate that he has to pay $10 every month. So for this particular, so there's our equation. We have to write an equation. So there it is. But now we have to um, solve uh, the particular equation and for the scenario where he rents three movies. That means that M would equal three. So we're going to say that his cost is going to be 10 plus 150 times three, okay? So that's gonna be 450. If he has, if you have 150 and 150, that's $3. And then $3 plus another 150 is gonna be 450. So he's gonna have to pay $10 and then also 450. So his grand total will be $14.50. And it's pretty weird because I'm pretty sure that I pay more than that with my Netflix account. So perhaps I should figure out where Mr. Hernandez is getting his movies from. But that is how you do that, little guy. And you have your last do-it-yourself example. And once you've completed this example, you will have completed your notes for this lesson, and I will see you in class. Thank you for watching.